When we draw a Bezier curve, often we want to think of that as the center of some thicker curve, and it would be great if we could get curves to one side and the other side of the Bezier curve. Of course, we can do exactly that, and they're called offset curves. Let's see an example. So here's our starting Bezier curve, and I would like to draw a curve a little bit to one side and a little bit to the other. So here's one way to think about it. Imagine that we drew this curve with a very thick stroke. If we could find the curves that define the inside and outside of the stroke, then we could do away with the stroke, which we just had there as a visual aid. And now we have three curves, the center curve that we started with and a curve on either side. If we don't draw the center curve at all, then we just have this nice thick band that we can use for a road to drive on or a piece of spaghetti or a piece of tubing or anything that we want to do that involves a pair of curves that seem to roughly be parallel to one another. This all may sound familiar to you because we discussed how to do this for Catmull rom curves. It turns out that the process for doing it with Bezier curves is almost identical. So I'm not going to go through all the detail again. I will just cover the process in very general terms. So if any of the upcoming steps are unfamiliar to you, go back and check out those videos and remember how that works. So let's run through the process very quickly. We start by getting tangents. At every point on the curve, we can find a tangent line. That's the line that just kisses or grazes the curve at that point. We hand processing a point on the curve and it gives us back the tangent and we'll see the function call for that in a moment. But just as with Catmull-Rom curves, the tangents we get back are not of the same length. They're shorter when the curve is changing a lot and they're longer when the curve is shallow and flat. This is sometimes very helpful because if we want to know how much the curve is changing at any given point, we just get the tangent and check its length. If the length is small, the curve is changing a lot. But for drawing offsets, we want all of these tangents to be the same length. And so we scale them so that they all have the same length. So now that we have our tangents, we're going to rotate them 90 degrees. These are now called normals or normal lines. At every point on the curve, the normal is perpendicular to the curve. It's exactly at right angles. And if you don't remember how to rotate a line by 90 degrees, there's a video on that, so go check that out as well. Now that we have the normals, all we have to do is draw a curve that connects the outside line of each normal. And we can also draw a curve that connects the inside point of every normal. And now we've got our offset curves. So the key thing here is to get the tangents. How do we do that? Well, we take our Bezier curve, which we would draw through these four points, and we pick a value of t somewhere between 0 and 1. As always, this gives us a point somewhere along the curve. So we find a point on the curve by specifying t, and then we ask processing for the tangent at that point. It gives us back two values, which here I'm calling xt and yt for x tangent and y tangent. The x value tells you how far to the right to move from the point on the curve to get to the red dot. And the y value tells you how far up and down to move to get from the point on the curve to the red dot. So how do we get xt and yt? We call Bezier tangent. Notice that there's a capital T there in the middle. We hand it the x values of the four points and the value of t. So this looks just like we're calling Bezier point and it works the very same way, except we're getting back the tangent. To get the y value, we just call Bezier tangent again, the very same routine, but we hand it the y values of the four points and the value of t. So this gives us the tangent at any point along the curve. If we pick a large value of t, we'll get the tangent for a point near the end of the curve. If we pick a small value of t, we'll get the tangent for a point near the beginning of the curve. So now that we have the tangents, we need to rotate them 90 degrees to make the normals. To rotate a point by 90 degrees, we can use this pinwheel diagram. Once again, refer to the video on how to rotate points 90 degrees if this isn't familiar to you. So using the coordinates that are here on this pinwheel diagram, we know how to rotate any point by 90 degrees. So great, we, now we have all the pieces. We have our curve, we call Bezier tangent to get the tangent at each point. We scale the tangent so it has a fixed length. We rotate it 90 degrees and now we're done. We just connect up the outsides and the insides and we have two tangent curves. 
Let's take a look at this in practice. Here's a single Bezier segment. First, I'll draw the tangents. They lie along the segments. They might be a little hard to see, so I'll turn off the line, and I'll also draw fewer tangents. So there we are. There they all are. And now I will rotate each one by 90 degrees to get the normals. And now I will draw the offset curve that goes through the inside of these tangents and the offset curve that goes through the outside of the tangents. Notice that the two curves are not perfectly smooth. Let's look just at the outer one. The reason it's not smooth is I'm taking the endpoints of the normals here marked with little circles. Tell you what, I'll even turn off the tangents. So I take the first four normals, which are the little circles at the end of those normal lines, and those are the four points that I use to draw the first Bezier curve. Then I take the next four points and I use them and I draw another Bezier curve. I don't do anything special in the middle to force a smooth join. Of course, we know how, we just need the handles to all lie in a line an equal distance from the center point. But that's a lot of work to do in this kind of a situation. An alternative to making that smooth is just to use lots more points. So if I crank up the number of points and tell you what, I'll turn them off and we can see that the curve looks much smoother. And here's the inner curve. And it also is just joining up the ends of the tangents. As I move these points around, these curves follow us. But just as with the location of points along the curve to draw motion, you can see that the points are not uniformly spaced. If this is very, very long, and I make this distance very, very short, you can see that things are bunched up at the yellow end, and they're much more widely spaced at the blue end. Generally speaking, if we take lots of steps, we won't see that sort of thing. Tell you what, let's turn everything off, and there's just our two curves, and there's the one that goes down the middle, and so we have a nice solution, and I can move this around any way I like. Let's take a look at a curve with lots of segments. Here's a nice asymmetrical figure eight. So let's go through the same process. I'll turn off the line just for a moment, and we'll draw the tangents. So there they are, and they follow the center line. I'll rotate the tangents 90 degrees. That gives me the normals. And now I will draw the inside and outside curves. So tell you what, I'm gonna turn off the tangents just for a moment, and we can see that in fact, these curves are following the shape even if I move the shape around. But the curve does look pretty rough, in particular down here. So let's use lots more segments and smooth things out. So I'm taking lots of steps and everything looks pretty nice. Just as with Katmorom curves, we can get some weird effects. All right, so let's take a look at what's happening here. I'm gonna turn off the normals so we just see the curves. And let me exaggerate this a little bit. Notice that we're getting this little fishtail. What's going on there? Well, the curve is trying to take a really, really tight corner. Let's look at the tangents again. Notice how they swing around down at that bottom right corner. If we look at the normals, they're really jumping around quickly. The problem here has nothing to do with, you know, anything wrong in the system or in the math. It's just we're asking these curves to do something that they're really not designed to do. If we bring the curves in closer to the center line, I'll show you the center line, and now let's bring the curves in closer. I'll turn the center line off again. That effect seems to go away. And in fact, all I have to do is tweak it a little bit, turn off the knots, and now everything looks really nice. But as I push the curves further and further away from the center point, we begin to see these little effects. Now we're getting a little fishtail in the bottom left, and this will exaggerate the fatter and fatter the curve gets until I'm drawing these really, really fat donut curves, and I'm getting all kinds of weird stuff happening. There's the center curve, and these are the offsets. Here are the normals, and here are the tangents. And it actually looks kind of pretty in, in a lot of ways, I really like this as kind of an abstract design, but it's probably not what we're looking for from offset curves. So you don't want to push the distance of the offset from the center line by too much. But if we bring it back in to sort of a reasonable number, and that completely depends on the nature of the curve and the nature of the control points, then things will look pretty nice. And I'll tell you what, let's turn the knots back on and we'll just kind of manipulate this a little bit. There, now that's largely gone away. It's completely gone away now. All right, we have a little bit of an artifact showing up, but we can really play with this and notice that these offset curves really follow the inner curve very nicely. 
So that's really all there is to offset curves. I know I went through this very quickly, and that's because they really are based on the same ideas that we saw for the Catmull ROM curves. So if this didn't make a lot of sense to you, check out that video and the videos on scaling lines, because we're scaling the tangent at every point here, and rotating 90 degrees. Offset curves are a really useful technique in lots of situations, so it's a good trick to have in your toolkit.